Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. I've avoided this for too long. Obs and midrange is just a stupid, stupid strategy. Not only did it dominate Pro Tour Khan's Atark here, but the same exact list pummeled players all weekend. Do you remember the Jun midrange deck from two summers ago? Yeah, this reminds me of that, except with a rhinoceros instead of a tusked beast thing. Time to deck tech this monster. Obzan midrange might as well be called Obzan good stuff. That's what the deck is. You're playing the best cards in white, black, and green. That simple. Everything's about individual value and power level. Welcome to the bully of the format. If you play this strategy, you might as well tattoo a target on your forehead. Also, disclaimer, yes, the deck's expensive. I know, but it's just so good. It's so, so good. The mana base for this deck is super complicated, but is generally accepted at this point. Four Sandstep Citadel, four Temple of Malady, and four Windswept Teeth are the playsets. These are joined by two Caves of Koyos, two Lanowar Wastes, one Mana Confluence, one Temple of Silence, and one Urborg. Add in three Forests and two Plains, and you have the convoluted 24 land mana base. The rest of the deck is just filled with the best stuff. There are 16 creatures. Two Elvish Mystic and four Sylvan Caryatid do what they've always done. Ramp your mana to get your threats out early. It also doesn't hurt that Caryatid fixes your mana in the best way possible. Four Corsair or Accrue Fix shouldn't surprise anyone either. It's a staple. You can get it out on turn two with a Mystic, and it gains a ton of life with Fetchlands and favorable top decks. Being able to go one card deeper in your library looking for land is valuable, especially in a strategy that relies on three colors. The real beaters in the deck come in the form of four Siege Rhino and two Wingmate Rock. Siege Rhino is the new standard as far as quality creatures are concerned. If your deck can't beat Siege Rhino, do not play that deck. The card's just too good. Five Toughness outshines all damage-based removal people are playing minus Crater's Claws and I guess Faded Conflagration. Even then, it's four mana for a six point life total swing and a removal spell at worst. The Rhino is just so gross. Wingmate Rock is a card that got a lot of slack when it was first announced. What people forgot is that two, three, four flyers are outrageously powerful, especially when the trigger is so easy to activate. In this deck, it isn't that hard to just swing with a chorus or a siege rhino and boom, free three, four bird. It's just another value creature that's really annoying to get rid of without two for one in yourself. The Planeswalker package is also packing a lot of heat. Three Elspeth Sons Champion, two Soren Solemn Visitor, and two Ajani Mentor of Heroes. That spread is a true nightmare to fight against. Elspeth has proved her viability for almost a year now. With cons coming out, she has a whole new level of value. Her middle ability has newfound destructive capabilities. It destroys other siege rhinos, most anything in green red monsters, Butcher of the Horde, the list goes on and on. Even without that, it's not like her first or third abilities are useless. Elspeth is just a great all-around card that, once again, is hard to deal with without losing value. Sorin might be the true unsung hero of this strategy. He flew a bit under the radar when the set first came out, but it didn't take long for people to start freaking out over his plus one and for good reason. Lifelink is turning out to be an important keyword to have in this format. With Siege Rhino life swings all over the place and Jeskai Tempo lists trying to deal 12 damage with burn spells on turn 5, Lifelink is a good insurance policy to have. Not only that, but being able to give your team a buff until your next turn allows your 4-5 Rhino to become a 5-5 Rhino that can block opposing Rhinos. Soren can break games wide open. The math is there. His value is undeniable. The first ability alone makes him an all-star, a tempo god. Not exaggerating. A Johnny is in this deck because honestly, why not? His counter distribution is powerful as even just one counter allows any of the creatures in your deck to overpower their equivalents. Wingmate Rock becomes a 4-5 and doesn't die to Sarkin or Stormbreath Dragon. Siege Rhino becomes a 5-6 and doesn't die to Pelucranos or another Rhino. You get the point, he's pretty great. His second ability is pure card advantage. You play 23 creatures and planeswalkers. Revealing four cards should give you at least one creature or walker you can take. If it doesn't, you just got rid of four cards you probably didn't want. Again, I can't stress this enough. The whole deck is about value. A Johnny brings a lot of value to the table. The rest of the deck is made up of 13 of the best spells in standard right now. Four obs and charm lead the pack. This is arguably the best spell in the deck. Every single mode is useful. Worst case scenario, this becomes a Thoughtseize Magnet. 
Best case scenario, it does whatever you want at any point in the game. I know all the charms were supposed to be equal power level wise, but they totally aren't. Obzan charm is on a whole other level. There is an argument for Jeskai as well, but that talk is for another video. Right now, Obzan charm is a boss. The rest of the spells are four thought sees, three heroes downfall, and two utter end. No surprises here. Quality removal and the best discard spell in the format makes perfect sense. These, in combination with Obzan charm, can deal with most anything your opponent plays. You have a lot of catch alls here. The ability to deal with planeswalkers in multiple ways is important in a meta where Sarkin, Soren, and Elspeth are just three of the planeswalkers seeing significant play. When I told you the deck was about individual power level and value, I wasn't lying. I can't even tell you a solid strategy for this deck, you just play things. If they play stuff, you kill their stuff, then you play more stuff. Okay, this is how the deck works. I play Siege Rhino, can you deal with it? Oh, okay, I play Wingmate Rock, Trigger Raid, can you deal with it? Oh, nice. Okay, I play Elspeth and Soren. Oh, you have no removal left? Well, I can do this all day. There. Welcome to Obzan Midrange, the deck that keeps asking the question, can you deal with this? To sideboard correctly with this deck, it's important to understand why it's so powerful right now. Obzan Midrange is strong because the meta is based around Obzan Midrange. What I mean by that is we live in a format filled with midrange strategies. Obzan matches up pretty well against most other midrange decks. Because of this, your sideboard is going to be designed to out midrange your mirror matches and similar matchups. To this end, cards like Doom Blast, Mass Calcify, and and Hostilities are insanely good and auto-includes in your board. They come in against any deck that's even remotely similar to yours. Even cards like Nissa World Waker and Murderous Cut are also important. More removal, more late-game threats. That's what you need to beat mid-range strategies. Against aggro decks, Drown in Sorrow is pretty amazing. It deals with all the 2-1s, Goblin Rabble Master, pretty much anything that aggro decks throw down early that isn't Fleece Main Lion. For him, you've got Bio Blight if you need it. Omzan um, Midrange is a stupid, stupid strategy that is just too powerful right now. Once the meta shifts and control becomes more prevalent, this may change. But for right now, Midrange is king and Obzan is sitting on the throne. How do you feel about Obzan Midrange? Are you playing it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? If you have any questions, comments, concerns, cool Snapple cap facts, leave them down below. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.